How are we game leapers? Coach Cheeks here with another ripper of a video showing you how to win lane in three minutes as a support. I'm going to be giving you guys three tips on how to make sure you win lane every game. These include pushing wave one, harassing, and jungle tracking. For the later examples, we're going to be watching gameplay of the rank one player in EU West playing Janna, who is almost 1500 LP, and seeing what he does and doesn't do to help you guys improve. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more informative content, and check out GameLeap.com, the leading source for educational league content. Hundreds of courses, guides, and videos made by the best to help you be the best. Let's send it. Tip number one, pushing wave one. When the first wave collides, I want you guys to start auto-attacking the first melee minions unless you can either harass or posture to pressure the enemy ADC and or support for free. We'll get into what that means soon, so don't go anywhere. If you auto-attack the crease more than the enemy bot lane, your wave will push to their side of the lane. What are the advantages of doing this? You create a bigger minion wave because you're killing the enemies quicker than they are killing yours. You hit level two first and you have more time to harass and posture. So why is a bigger minion wave important? Well, if you get engaged on, your minions will do a great deal of damage to the enemy champions. Early in the laning phase, minions can deal the same, if not more damage than champions in a fight. In a way, they act as a security blanket for when or if you get caught. Sometimes you might even want to get engaged on based on the minion advantage. It also means that you're better suited to counterattack if you get ganked. When the minion wave is significantly larger than the opponent's, you can turn those 3v2s into 2v3s, and someone on the enemy team is, well, probably already thinking about surrendering. Why does level 2 matter? Two cooldowns always beats one, or in bot lane's case, four cooldowns always beats two, and your champion is naturally stronger because of the increase in stats. In other words, no matter how bad the matchup is or how bad your ADC is, you always win if you have a two and the enemy has a one. How do you have more time to harass and posture? What does this mean? Well, when you have the push in the bank, you don't have to unconsciously keep auto-attacking the creeps because the push is ensured. Use this time to stand further up in the lane and pressure the enemy ADC. Remember, however, each auto attack and ability you use on the minion wave is an auto attack and ability you could have used on the enemy champions. Let's now look at how the rank one Janna player executes or doesn't execute pushing wave one. Janna doesn't auto attack the minions at all. She stands back almost AFK and gives up the early laning phase entirely. If you watch any high elo Korean game, the supports are always fighting for the early push. Now there might be a reason for why she's doing this, but I still don't think it's valid. But we'll discuss that later. Another issue with doing nothing level 1 is that you're more useless, sure, but the enemy support has way more pressure. See how Thresh can just walk up for free and control the fog? What do you think happens when Thresh hits level 2 in this lane? I'll show you. Thresh flash Qs and trades his flash for misfortunes, always worth. And on the next wave, what a surprise. This is EU West Challenger, and I know you guys in whatever elo you're in can play the first two levels much better than what we just saw. Push, wave, one. Let's look at another example, and here we see a change. Karthus is already laying his waste on the minions, but Janna doesn't have to go nuts with auto attacks. She evades the bounce on Jin's bouncing grenade, softens up one range minion so it's easier for Karthus to see us, and then W's Jin. Pog. Can you guys see the difference? How easy does this lane look compared to the last one? Pantheon even decides to W onto Janna and gets chunked because of the minion advantage. Push the wave, man. Next game. Janna doesn't auto attack the first creeps to help Twitch push, and this is crucial. For some reason, she's more occupied with the level 1 Rakan. Kaisa and Rakan should always have the push if every player plays optimally, but they don't especially in low elo and even in challenger. In low elo, it doesn't matter if it's range versus melee or the enemy support count as yours because no one knows how to play efficiently. This is one step towards that. Push wave one. Tip number two, harassing. When you don't have to push the wave, look to harass the enemy ADC. What does this mean? This means you are moving up in the lane to potentially get in range of the enemy bot lane. Sometimes you won't be able to rocket grab or star call because the enemy ADC retreats. So what's the point then? Well, if they run back, they will most likely give up CS, in other words, gold, and sometimes experience when they really retreat. If they stay put, then guess what? You deal damage to them, or put yourself in range to land a skill shot which, depending on the support you're playing, may lead to a kill. Anyone can pick Soraka, Janna, Sona, and sit under their tower. And anyone who picks Pantheon, Thresh, Blitzcrank, and sits back letting the enemy ADC farm for free is trolling. It's important no matter what support you play to position or posture in a way that exerts pressure. You don't have to use an ability to do so. For example, a Leona sitting in fog is affecting the way your ADC plays. A Janna posturing to W the enemy ADC whenever her Zephyr is off cooldown is disrupting the enemy ADC. This is the essence of trading. I want one thing, you want another. And from a support's point of view, this is normally the enemy ADC saying, hey bro, can I have this CS for free? And you as a support replying, nah, if you want the gold, I need some HP. 
If you don't look to harass, the enemy ADC gets away with murder and has a free laning phase. Why is this bad? Well, think of a Vayne having the same CS as a Caitlyn at 5 minutes. That's obviously bad. And the reason is because you didn't look to harass the Vayne. She farmed for free. Let's look at a few examples from the rank 1. This is the perfect example. The push is prioritized as Janna hits the range minions and she moves in range of Jin to W. Couple of small details. If Janna was to move to the higher side of the lane to harass Jin, which is where he's standing, he can simply move down or potentially retaliate with bouncing his grenade onto both Karthus and Janna. So she keeps her distance from Karthus and the CS. A trade occurs and as Janna is about to hit level 2, third melee minion on wave 2, she looks to harass and Jin reacts accordingly and backs up. But what does Jin miss as a result? 1CS. Now this won't win the lane of course, but if you do this for the whole laning phase, you win bot lane single-handedly, regardless of how many losses your ADC has in a row. Push into harass. Remember the condition for harassing, if you don't have to push. Janna here has to push, that should be her priority. Because she doesn't, Kaiser and Rakan are much safer, and if Janna was to move up and W Kaiser, she would get chunked because of the wave. For supports with targeted abilities like Janna's W, you will draw minion aggro, which is why it's so important to try to push wave 1. Otherwise, you will take way too much damage from the minions. In this lane, the Caden Thresh have the push, but wave 2 comes into lane. As a result, Janna is protected against Thresh and can focus Kate. She Ws and Kate auto attacks back. A good trade. In lower elo, the enemy ADC will likely let you damage them for free, and won't CS efficiently because of the pressure you're applying. Jin and Bart have the push, but what is stopping Janna from moving up and looking to W Jin? If Bart tries to attack Janna, the Ezreal can then damage Bard. Instead, she decides to run into a bot brush, doesn't start a step, and gets Bard queued, and any opportunity to harass Jin dissipates. Focus the ADC, guys. This is the worst one out of all of them. In a range versus melee support matchup, there's no way Leona should be able to push into Janna. We saw what happened when an all-in support like Thresh got the push, but this looks really int. This is a level 1 Leona, not level 2, not level 3. Janna letting Leona hit those spikes on full HP tells you everything you need to know. There's no push, there's no harass. Before we get into the last tip, we'd really appreciate it if you guys could help us out and like the video. It does so much for the video and lets us know you're enjoying this type of content. Tip number 3, Jungle Tracking. Who comes to lane first? That's the question I want you guys asking yourselves during wave 1. Whatever lane shows first indicates where the enemy jungler started. Reason for this is the lane who leashes is always to lane later. So, if top lane shows first, the enemy jungler started bot side. Next question, can we get level 2 ganked? Maybe it's a Lee Sin, Jarvan. There is definitely a chance they immediately run bot lane, so warding the tri brush as soon as you can is a great counter. If there's no opportunity to ward, you have to respect the possibility and play safe. If the enemy jungler doesn't show bot side of the map after 30 seconds, chances are they have now passed towards top side of the map and you and your ADC are safe for at least 2 minutes. What happens if the enemy bot lane shows first, or is already in lane? Then the enemy jungler started top side and will typically path bot. One of the most common paths for a jungler is to take both buffs and Grom to hit level 3 with both red and blue buff. Placing a ward in Tribrush or River around the 215-220 mark is a great way to nullify the jungler's threat. Bot lane isn't just a 2v2, but your goal is to keep it that way in regards to the enemy jungler. The jungle tracking is essential. As a support, you have a lot more free time than your ADC. Also, you guys think your silver ADC is going to even look at the map once during a game? Probably not, unless it's to blame their jungler for their own mistakes. Those are the days. This game lets enlarge the map. Who comes to lane first? Gangplank, right? Which means he didn't leash red buff. Therefore, the enemy jungler started bot buff, which is confirmed when Jin arrives to lane with some mana missing. The enemy jungler is an Evelyn, so she should never gank bot until 4 minutes. She will be pathing topside and recalling to head back to Gromp or bot crab if K6 doesn't take it. I'll forward it to after 4 minutes so you know I'm not telling porky pies. Evelyn is spotted back bot side. Thank you. This is an interesting one. Kindred starts with the enemy blue buff, and you can assume Karthus does the same the way Thresh walked from River. In this situation, both jungles will most likely vertical jungle, which is where you stick to one side of the map, bot or top, but trespass up or down into the enemy jungle through the river, hence the term vertical jungle. I think Janna and Misfortune respect the Karthus way too much anyway, and should instead focus on the first two tips. Push wave 1, harass. If it was Elisa or Jarvan, maybe it's justified. Another good example. Pause it. Who was in lane first? Enemy bot lane, right? So the enemy kindred started top buff. What if Riven was already in lane though? How then would you tell? I mentioned it just before. Mana bars. 
Leona is full mana and if she leashes, she will for sure use her Q. Because Kindred started top buff, she will be bot side soon, and this is the only reason that rationalizes Janna's extremely passive playstyle. I'm not a fan regardless of the elo you're in, but in your games remember to push the wave and harass regardless of where the enemy jungler starts. Remember these three tips when you are supporting guys and I guarantee laning will become a whole lot easier. Thanks so much for watching the entire video. Leave a like to help the video out. Subscribe so you don't miss any of our sick future uploads. And make sure you check out our website gameleap.com. Videos, courses, guides, all made by challenger level players and coaches to help you improve your game. This has been Coach Eggs. Until next time, peace.